Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. It's Smarty Pants Chess. I saw a very interesting game the other day on chess.com. So this was played between Komodo and Leela Chess Zero CPU. Uh, it was 15 minutes each on the clock with a five second increment. And Komodo was playing white in this game and Leela Chess Zero CPU was playing black. And the opening three moves anyway were D4 Knight to F6, C4 E6, Knight C3 and Leela played Bishop B4. This is the end of the book, and we're into a Nimzo Indian variation. So Black's just pinned this knight on c3, and Black's also preparing to play moves like c5 and d5, and this knight on c3 is now pinned. So it's not very strong in the centre. Here Komodo played knight to f3, developed normally, Leela castled, bishop g5 from Komodo, pinning the knight on f6, and a typical c5 break by Leela. So undermining this d4 pawn in the centre, Komodo supports it though with e3, Leela captured, Komodo recaptured and black played h6, hitting the bishop which drops back to h4, still maintaining the pin against this knight, but uh, not for long because now Leela played queen a5, a battery against this c3 knight. And this is where things start to get interesting. Now typically white usually plays queen c2 here to support the knight, and if knight to e4, there's rook c1, again to support the knight, and d5. And these are the typical moves that are played in the most games. Bishop d3, queen takes a2, of course the knight is still pinned on c3. Bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, and knight to d2, attacking the pawn on e4. Queen a5 and queen takes e4. And this is what was given in most games that humans have played. And I put this through an engine by Stockfish, and it gives it as black as slightly better. So if we just go back to this queen a5 move in the game, maybe this is why Komodo didn't play queen c2, because it's after a few more moves, um, it's actually quite good for black. So in the game, Komodo played a very interesting move, just ignores the threats of bishop takes c3 by playing bishop to d3 instead. So this is where things get very interesting. Black took on c3 with check, the pawn recaptured, and the queen recaptured with check, and also attacking this rook on a1. So white can't play queen d2 because then the black queen will take the rook. So king f1 was played. And Lele now played an interesting move, knight h5. So moving this knight away from the bishop on h4. And maybe preparing to play knight to f4 at some point. Black's king is also rather safe in this position and white is actually a pawn down. So we'll see what Komodo can concoct here. They began with rook c1. So attacking the queen. The queen retreats to a3. Attacking this a2 pawn, so Komodo defends with queen to d2 to protect it. And now there are a few interesting moves that black can play. I looked at knight to f4. The idea is that uh, the knight attacks the bishop on d3. And the queen also attacks this bishop. And if queen takes knight, then black will take the bishop on d3 with the queen. But I looked at this variation with stockfish, and they recommended going bishop to b1. And if knight g6... Now white has an amazing move, bishop to f6. If black ever captures this bishop, then queen takes h6 from white, just crashing in. And the point is after f5, white can calmly just play h4. The point is the knight is jumping in to g5, where white will threaten mate on h7. And if black tries to move their piece out of the way for the king, like let's say rook e8 here, white can play h5, attacking the knight on g6. Um, and then if the knight moves away, then of course, again, we have knight g5 ideas. And it's looking very bleak for black. I looked at queen f8 here. But white can now win their piece back with queen g5. So the pawn attacks the knight on g6, and it's pinned against this queen. And if f6 is queen takes g6 check, king h8. And stockfish recommended d5 for white. And honestly, black's in a terrible position. d6... Knight d4, rook e7, and then we finish with h6. After e5, there's knight b5, and this is totally lost for black. Basically, white's sacking this d6 pawn. Black's still got three pieces trapped on the other side of the board, undeveloped. Um, and white's just threatening to play moves like h7, maybe even do a rook lift with one of these rooks, perhaps, or just bishop takes f5. It's all going on for white here. So let's go back to this position. Knight to f4 was the move we just looked at but it looks as though it's not great for black. But uh, again, bishop b1, knight g6, and bishop f6. 
We looked at just taking this bishop, but that's suicide for black. Black may be able to just play knight c6 here, but again, it's a very nice position for white to be in. And it's uh, very interesting and quite unbalanced. However, going back to the game, instead of knight to f4, Leela played d6, and Komodo continued their aggressive play. So they're pawn down, so they've got to be quite aggressive. They played rook c3, attacking the queen. The queen went to b4, and now g4, a very interesting move, attacking the knight on h5. If knight to f6 here, I think white just wins with bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, and then queen takes pawn, h6. If queen takes c3, queen h7, he's just checkmate. Easy win for white. So in the game, Leela is a bit trickier. She plays knight f4. The point is the queen is attacking the rook on c3. So if the queen for white ever moves, if this queen ever moves, then black will take the rook. So it's just a bit of a trick there. So instead of taking the knight, a3 was played. I'm still attacking the queen, which retreats back to a5, maintaining the attack on the rook on c3. Very important. But now Komodo seems to be in the driving seat. They play bishop e7, hitting the rook and the d6 pawn. Rook e8 has to be played, it's the only move to save the rook. And Komodo regains their pawn with bishop takes d6. Now attacking the knight on f4 with the bishop. So Leela has to bail out this knight with knight takes d3. And Komodo recaptures with queen takes d3. Now if we assess this position, it looks as though white has quite a good advantage already. They got a good bishop on d6. Three pieces are out. Basically all white needs to do is maybe play king to g2 and get this other rook out into the game. Um, but black's still quite far behind in development here. So they play knight c6, developing the knight. Rook g1. So instead of my idea with the king g2, Komodo has a different idea of a kingside attack. They're going to play maybe g5 and h4. Just open some lines up against black. Lilo attacks the bishop. And interestingly, I think white can actually still play g5 here. Because if rook takes d6, let's say, there's g takes h6. The pawn and rook converge on this g7 pawn, so if g6. White has a sacrifice, rook takes. And if f takes g6, there's queen takes king f8 and h7. And that's an easy win for white. But it's not so simple. So after rook d8, g5 doesn't just win instantly. They can play e5 by black amazingly. Um, and after d takes e5, knight takes, knight takes, rook takes d6, queen takes d6, queen takes c3. Uh, this is a very complicated variation. g takes h6, queen c1. It actually leads to a drawn game because after king g2, queen takes h6, queen takes, pawn takes, king f3, king f8. Amazingly, after all that, um, both sides have four pawns each and a minor piece and a rook each, and it's a drawn end game. Again, maybe white is slightly better because the knight is in an advantageous position, but we all say that bishops are actually better than knights in an end game. I guess black will play bishop e6 next or something to that effect. So rook d8 has just been played by Lila Chess 0. Komodo actually played bishop e5 in the game. Leela's knight captured the bishop, the knight recaptured, and f6 was played, hitting the knight. But now Komodo plays a great move, g5. And why is this so good? Because, well, if f takes the knight, this g takes h6 again. Again, the pawn and rook attack this g7 pawn. If black defends with rook d7, then queen f3, e takes d4, and then h7, check. Um, and if, let's say, king h8, then queen f8, king takes h7, rook h3, check, queen h5, rook takes the queen, is checkmate. So after this h7 move, if king takes the pawn, queen h3, king g8, and queen takes e6 with check. If rook f7 to block it, there's queen e8, and if uh, king h7 here, queen takes f7. Taking the rook and threatening mate on g7. If queen e5, there's rook to g3. And white's in the driving seat. Let's go back to this queen e8 move as well, very briefly. If rook f8 to block, there's an amazing sacrifice with rook takes g7. King takes g7. And white can play rook g3 check. The point is, after the king moves, let's say to h7. Queen g6, king h8, and queen g7 is checkmate. So, after this g5 move by Komodo, we can't take this knight as black. It's suicide. G takes h6 is just too strong. 
So Lila is forced to capture on g5, and that's what happens, h takes g5. And Komodo still ignores the threat on the knight, they play rook to g3. Again, if f takes the knight, queen g6 is super strong in this position, because after, let's say, queen c7, there's rook h3. The idea is to play rook f3, and queen h7 is checkmate. And there's very little black can do about this. So after rook g3, Lila is too smart to take the knight. She plays bishop d7 instead, developing her last piece. Rook h3 was played, preparing queen h7 check, I imagine. And here actually Leela does take the knight off, f takes e5. So Komodo keeps on willing Leela to take the knight and she's finally done it. And Komodo's trap is sprung, he plays queen g6. Again I think white's idea is to play, maybe play rook f3 and queen h7 ideas here. Or just queen h7 and rook f3 and all three pieces will be at black's throat. So bishop e8 was played by Leela, attacking the queen, and queen h7 was played with check. So after queen h7, there was maybe a chance for Leela to draw the game. King f7 could be played, and after rook f3, king e7, queen takes g7 check, king d6 and c5. It looks very precarious for black's king, but after king c6 and queen takes e5, black can somehow find a draw in this position with queen a4. Because after d5, there's e takes d, rook b3, and queen c4. And amazingly, black's got a perpetual here. Because if king g1, there's queen g4, king f1, queen c4. And if king g1, there's queen g4 again. And I think this is super complicated, but the point is after, let's say, rook g3 to block the check, queen f4 can be played. And the point is black's just going to try and swap off queens. Once the queens are off, it's going to be black's game, because there's still a bishop up. So basically in this position, white just has to play king f1 and get the perpetual check. Similarly, after queen g4, if king h1, black can just play queen e4 and again try and trade off queens. And actually black's got a nice position here because this rook is actually still pinned. So the threatening moves like g4 and swapping queens at the same time. Again, black is a minor piece up. Should be an easy endgame. So that's what happens if black goes king f7. So they could have got the draw. But Leela played king f8 in the game. Komodo continued with d5. Threatened take on e6 perhaps. Rook d7 was played and now d6. A very interesting move. The point behind this move is after rook takes d6, white could have played rook f3 check. And king e7 is basically the only move. Queen takes g7 with check, king d8, and then rook h8. And white's really coming into the fray here. If rook d1, there's king g2, and then queen a4 to protect the bishop. But then rook to f7. Black can't take this rook because the bishop's pinned. After queen c6, f3, rook d2, and king g3, the checks have run out for black. And they've got to deal with this battery against the bishop. If king c8, there's rook e7. Rook d8 to protect the bishop again, but then queen to g8. And it looks as though white's going to win their piece back. Let's say queen takes c4, rook takes e8, queen f4, king g2, and then queen g2 check. King h3, and the checks have run out for black again. After king c7, to protect the rook on d8, queen g7, king c6, and rook takes e6. White is in the driving seat, just because black's king is really exposed in this position. And white's going to easily hoover up these pawns with checks at some point, I would imagine, as well. So after d6 from Komodo, Leela played e4 instead of taking that pawn off. Komodo took on e4. g4 was played. And queen takes g4. So black's just given up loads of pawns back to try and um, stop white's attack. King g8 was played to try and hide. Again, black gives us another pawn with queen takes e6. Rook f7, and rook to f3. And it still doesn't look any better for black, to be honest. The rook's pinned on f7. Moves like d7 can be played next. So to stop the pawn running on the d-file, queen d2 was played. And now rook g3 by Komodo. a5 by Leela, and now h4. So Komodo is getting their last piece into the attack. They've pinned this g-pawn. They're going to try and push this h-pawn on the board now and use this as an attacking weapon. b6 by Leela, h5, 
rook d8. And now black is threatening to take on d6, so they can finally play d7. A very interesting move. So the point is the rook can't take it because then the queen takes the bishop. If the bishop takes, then queen takes the rook on f7. So basically queen takes d7 is forced. And Komodo comes up with a great move. Rook takes g7 with check. So the rook is pinned on f7, can't take the rook on g7. So the king is forced to take it off. King takes a great sacrifice. Komodo follows up with rook g3 check. King f8 was played. I think if the king moves anywhere else, it's checkmate. For instance, let's say king h8. I'm sure we can just play queen h6, rook h7, and that's checkmate. So after rook g3, king f8 was played. Queen h6 is played now. And if the king runs to e7, there's rook e3 check, queen e6, and queen takes e6. King f8, and then back with queen h6 check, rook g7, and queen f6. And they're going to win the rook on d8. An absolute mess. So in the game, rook g7 was played to block the check. And now queen h8. And basically, white's going to win the rook back. Because if black goes um, rook to g8, they're going to take it. So in the game, Lila played queen to e7. Queen takes g7 was played. And bishop f7. So still black's a minor piece up. But white has two pawns for the bishop. However, Komodo isn't finished yet. They play rook e3 with check, king d6, rook d3. The point is now they're going to try and win this queen on d7. King c6, and then Komodo played queen g2 check, king c7, and finally Komodo takes the queen off. Rook takes d7, rook takes d7, and just queen g4, attacking the rook, giving the king some space, and after rook d8, queen f4 check, um, they're going to try and win this bishop. So king d7, queen takes bishop, and it's pretty much game over after this move. King d6, h6. Play continued on for a few more moves, but then there's another check. The queen takes the rook, and Komodo got two queens and finished the job with queen h4 mate against Leela, chess zero CPU. So I really hope my commentary has done this game justice. That was an um, incredible game, a credible attack. Very Nesmetnov style, actually, with a lot of sacrifices by Komodo. I thought this was a really amazing game, very interesting, and I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the game, please drop a like, comment, or subscribe. Um, if you have any feedback as well, I greatly appreciate it. It really helps me out and the channel. And hopefully I'll see you in the future with more chess videos. Goodbye for now.